Have you been wondering about building your own brand on social media? You got to have a presence because it's a remote world we're living in now. That's the new normal. Find out how to build your brand presence on social media. Coming up next. Today is a great episode here on To The Point. As always, I'm your host, Eric Mitchell. We're gonna be talking about building your brand, whether it be personal or your company, on social media. Now, there's been a rush since March to build brands on social because we're all there. We have nothing better to do. So if you're not streaming on Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, or whatever, you're on social media and you're probably binge watching and on social like the rest of us on our phones but watching TV. But what does it mean to be on social? You see so many brands out there, some are doing it right, some are doing it wrong. We all know those folks that are on there peddling their brands for dirt cheap with videos where they're walking and talking, maybe they've taken a couple famous photos with people or they're leaning on Lambos. But does that mean that their business is legit and can it really help yours grow? Because of course, at any time that there's tragedy or anything in the nation that causes chaos, that's when the bottom feeders rise to the top and try to take your money. But we don't want that here, and to the point we find the best of the best, and who better to be here is our resident digital marketing expert, the great Marine Corps veteran and leader of industry, serial entrepreneur George Bryant. So we're going to deep dive into these topics. Going to go about 20 for you guys, so to grab your pens and paper and find out how you can build your brand on social media today and get results that are actually going to help your brand in the long run. Remember, folks, we're now shooting on the same bucket all together. Everybody's on the same hoop. It's how you shoot on the hoop that makes you the difference between being Michael Jordan or Mateen Cleaves. Shout out to people who actually know that reference and go, Mateen Cleaves, yeah. Google it, you'll see who I'm talking about. But that's the difference here, folks. So let's get to the point with the great and my favorite lighthouse guy, the guy who's going to tell you how it is and how to fix your biz, the great George Bryant. Light Flip Media, the voice of the warrior class. Are you a veteran or patriotic business owner, author, musician, public speaker, or entrepreneur? Are you ready to take the next step towards success? Then look no further than Life Flip Media, the voice of the warrior class. Life Flip Media is the number one veteran-owned PR firm in America. We use our mission-oriented approach to secure advertising and media exposure for your business, your brand, and your products. It's time to let Life Flip Media put you on the cutting edge of success. Life Flip Media, the voice of the warrior class. Hey, George, how are you doing today, bud? I am stoked. Good to be back, my friend. Yeah, it's always good to have you on the show. It's like we miss you when you're not here. But I guess if we're having the great Montel Williams filling in for you when you're not here, I guess we're doing good. And we're still keeping it in the Marine Corps family. So I'll, I'll, I, I support Montel all the way. I support his veteran status. I support what he does for veterans. I support all of it. So there's nobody that I would rather move to the side for. Right. It's like it's Montel. So you got you to gotta give love to the Montel Williams. I mean, it's a crazy world we live in. I know since we've been interviewing you since we started this crazy journey of to the point, we keep talking about COVID-19 and it won't go away. In fact, it's actually become worse, uh, not better, which is opposite. But it's kind of cool to see businesses embrace remote a hundred percent but we're seeing a lot of people take to social in the wrong way uh, yeah like making a lot of mistakes on social media and that's what i wanted to bring you in today just to talk briefly we're just going to focus on one thing we're going to talk social 100 percent social media when it comes to using it the right way as a brand how to get your brand started on it and not to and i want to start with this one george and i think this is something where we see a lot of new brands hopping into social good for them jumping into the waters bad problem 
They're doing it wrong because they're trying to be on every platform and they're just a hot yeah. mess on every one of them instead of like focusing on the big boys, what I call the big three that you need to be madly in love with. Don't forget if you are a brand in B2B or even B2C, give LinkedIn some love because LinkedIn Link will give you love right back. LinkedIn needs some love. LinkedIn le needs love. Uh, don't forget about Facebook as much as you may hate Facebook. Facebook is where America is. It's where the world's at and you can do amazing things with ads. So get good at that. And then finally, it's kind of hit or miss. I'll, I would say YouTube, but I don't consider that a social media platform. I think it's a, one of the most powerful. We could almost say four. I know it's Marine Corps counting, so we'll say four instead of three. We'll just ad-lib this. Uh, so I would say the other one would be Instagram, but yep. you could insert Instagram, TikTok, or one of those, but we don't know if talk's going to be around. I see a lot one of, of the visual platforms. Yeah, but, yeah, and then YouTube. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. But I think YouTube is a separate beast, so let's agree here. That we're just going to place YouTube in a whole... We'll talk about YouTube on another George episode because that one is a whole beast by its... It's a monster by itself. It's not easy to do like Facebook and Insta and all... A whole different monster. So mm -hmm. that being said, this long Eric intro, <laughs> like what brand... Okay, what brand's like, okay, I need to go Facebook, LinkedIn. We'll start there. LinkedIn and maybe... Oh, we'll just say IG because it's popular. Everybody's on it too. I want to jump in. Which one do you say in order and where do they focus? Yeah, I love it. I love it. And and by the way, but Google, I mean, YouTube, you, YouTube's owned by Google. Yeah. Um, you know, the number one search engine in the world is Google. The number two search engine in the world is YouTube. The number three is Facebook. Um, so, yeah, you want to understand where those go. So, you know, I think the important thing here, Eric, that I think a lot of brands miss or a lot of companies miss or entrepreneurs miss is that, there's no point in going to a platform where your audience or prospective audience isn't, right? And so, you know, we have like let's let's stick with the big ones, right? So we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have Instagram, right? LinkedIn lends itself professionals, C-suite entrepreneurs, people are there, you know, with their shirt and tie and their headshots, and I have a blue mohawk in mine or something. But you know, they're being up there professional. So that's a very like I would almost want to call like an analytical and transactional platform in its nature, but there's now a resurgence of content. People are sharing long form content. They're writing blogs and articles on there. But that side of it, I would say, if you have a product or a service or a business that lends itself to facts, like hard facts, numbers, tangibles, like analytical stuff where people can measure what's there, that's where LinkedIn belongs. When you, when you think about Facebook, Facebook, the context of Facebook is that you have a lot of visual stimulation for pattern interrupts, right? You can get videos, images, GIFs, and all of those things, but it tends to be a get my attention and then give me a story, give me context, give me depth, give me substance, and then you go to the visual platforms like TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat, Snapchat which I would all put in the same one, and those are supposed to be like quick hit dopamine visual to where you don't have the level of depth because the consumer behavior on each platform is different. And so the first thing I recommend is that first as a company, as an entrepreneur, as a business, you have to know your message, your offering, your content, what you're going to share, and then you have to know the consumer and where they spend their time. So if you have a product uh, that lends itself to you know 50 plus men and women, Facebook's probably going to be a better platform for you because they're not really hanging out on Instagram. But if you have a demographic that's 18 to 25, 18 to 30, and you have a product that lends itself like a supplement, a clothing brand, a jewelry company, or anything along those lines, beauty that's visual based, then Instagram would be where you go. So the first mistake people make is they don't understand the purpose of the platform, what belongs on it, and then what their audience is going to consume. So that's the first thing to remember. And so from a priority, my way that I look at it is there's probably one of the three um, that your audience already is hanging out on more than anything else, right? And that's the one that you have to go deep with. You have to go all the way deep. And I watch a lot of companies and a lot of brands, like you said, they'll go on Facebook and they'll start there and they'll get to about a 70% solution. And then they're like, okay, that's working. Let me go to Instagram. Let me go to LinkedIn. And they spread themselves so thin across the board that now all platforms are being ineffective because there's no depth on the platform that you're supposed to be on. And when we think about social media, social media is just marketing, right? It's just a place to get attention. And in order to keep that attention, once you get it, you have to be able to maintain it like a relationship. So 
You can be on Instagram all day and posting and posting and posting and getting comments and getting likes. But if you're not re-engaging those people, if you're not responding to those comments, eventually you're going to train them that they shouldn't comment because you've lost their attention. And so if you take that energy and you go put it on Facebook and you double your efforts, you're actually doubling your liability and moving backwards. So for me, it's pick a platform and make sure that you go all the way deep on that platform. So if it's Instagram, make a rule. I'm going to post content consistently. I'm going to respond to every comment. I'm going to create a process to where we're a week ahead, and I'm going to use this as a KPI or a key performance index of how I measure my engagement. And once that process is there, and I know how this works, and it's in momentum, and I can add another platform without taking away from the platform that I'm on, then you go re-exhibit the same kind of plan, right? And so you want to make sure that each one maintains its independence. It can run all by itself, all the way in, and you're not sacrificing one to take parts of it and put it into the other one. And so that's that's kind of how it is. So if I if I said like, if I had to prioritize, you just have to figure out where your avatar is, right? And you shouldn't have a business or a company or a product if you don't know your customers or where they are. So start there. And then once you understand that, then you know what platform they're on. You pick that platform. And then once you understand that, you pick the modalities in which you're going to communicate on that platform, right? Because it, under each social media platform, you also have micro platforms like Facebook, for example. You have a Facebook page. You have a Facebook profile. You have a Facebook group. You can do events. You can do live videos. You can do stories. And then on Instagram, you have the same thing. And so once you pick a platform, then you have to pick the medium on that platform that is best suited for your customers. So Eric, your show, obviously, video works well. Instagram, short form clips, IGTV, Instagram stories, right? We're not going to sit here, maybe some headshots, but your content is going to be around video. But then when you have you know, makeup, you might feature the product, the ingredients in the product, and tutorials of people putting it on. You have a workout program. Well, obviously videos and things along those lines. But then if you're teaching somebody like how to write a book or how to write a novel or how to write an email, you might need to use long-form written content. And so you have to figure out your audience, then figure out once you know where they are, the best way to communicate with them. And then at that spot, you have all the ingredients required to make your plan. I'd say put your plan into place and at minimum give it 30 days of like full attention all the way in to kind of learn the ropes, make some adjustments, learn how to communicate in a relationship just like a marriage, right? We don't nail it every time or else my wife wouldn't text me some of those texts and says, hey, baby, we need to talk. Oh, man, here we go again. All right. I love you. I love yeah. you. You're right. Uh, so that's how I see it, man. Yeah. I, and I like the way that you put that because it's so true that, you know, people need to figure out what they're doing and understand that each one. I mean, I know Gary Vee has famously talked about this, like. Your content needs to be different on everything. And so many people don't realize that. They don't focus on that. Don't put the same thing you're putting on LinkedIn. And if you look at ours is a perfect example. Yes, we're a show, we're not selling a product. I mean, we're, we're selling our show to say, but we do different video there than you will see in long form. It's shorter form on LinkedIn. We know that. On Instagram, it's shorter videos. You might see the same thing you see on LinkedIn, but that's just to attract you to come to our show. But you see that with all shows. Make your content different so you stick out, so you're not this plain Jane person. No offense to anybody named Jane, uh, but you know, <laughs> sorry, I don't. I already have it enough with people named Karen. You know, they're like, stop. Uh, but it's the key ingredient is to make sure that you're building your product the right way and ha being authentic when you do it. Like when I see your videos, and we'll toot your horn while we're talking here, your content comes across authentic, and you make show yourself as vulnerable, and you're that passionate entrepreneur that tells you the good and the bad that goes on in business instead of this BS or else shit, we're just, it's my show, I can cuss on it. This bullshit of people leaning on Lambos. Everybody wants to be Grant Cardone or Gary or somebody and they're not. It, those guys didn't just fall into the, their money. It took years of work. Great, you could flick $100 bills like Grant, I highly doubt it. So, you know, Lewis Howes was talking about being authentic, right? And being, you have to be the same person you are in real life that you are on social. And so many people are really in their parents' basement and they go take a picture on a Lamborghini that they happen to be passing and they want you to believe it. They sell the course online for $99 or $997. They also make up different publications they belong to and they just scam people out of money. That's what's out there. Everybody, I see it every day. It makes me sick. And they're always the first people that want to say, hey, I want to go on your show. And I'm like, <laughs> the hell do you want to come on my show and say? And I think that's a problem that brands have is they follow those guys, right? Because you get it. You follow the bouncing ball. The bouncing ball is cheap or affordable. 
And I, I always tell people that's not a good deal when people are like, well, when it comes to media, I'm like, there's nobody for uh, under a thousand dollars. I mean, nobody under two G's. I can tell you nobody under three G's is putting you on national TV. Sorry. That just not happened in, in, in a world. And they're like, well, I get you. No, they don't. No, they absolutely don't. You're going to pay serious money to get on TV because that's where the ballers play. That's mm -hmm. why you see the V's and the Lewis's and the Ed Milets and everybody you see on an everyday basis. And it doesn't matter the size of a network either because people could crap. We had David Grosso on uh, a Friday ago, you know, the head of Bold TV. Well, Bold TV has a couple million viewers a day. Mm -hmm. And they're a great audience because they're using social. I, and I think mm -hmm. more and more people are doing it. So let, let's kind of talk about that as brands focus on yep. social. Also getting your marketing out there. You do a great job of it. I see your podcast out there. People can really just watch your social and learn. I, I think both of our socials good. There's a lot of folks out there that I see, but again, mixing it all together. How key is video right now for people? As we're talking on video, you and I both love video. You actually oh. put your podcast on video, which I think's dope. Uh, yeah, and it's key. You need to be making a lot of content, and, and you and I, yeah. you and I, you're unfortunately, if you're watching this video, both of us are the ones you should be looking at because I think we can peek to see who can pump out the most content in a week. And I think it's usually <laughs> head and head. We're pretty good. I run a show five days a week and you run an amazing marketing team. Together, we pump out a lot of content. If you put us together, it'd be we like do. Wonder Twins Unite and people would be scared. We'd have way too much content out. I mean, I love pumping out content. <laughs> it's fun. But let's talk about companies and content and producing video, how they should start yeah. that journey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah points that I want to hit real quick. So like we talked about, you know, don't post the same thing across the platform. We talk about authenticity and then we talk about video, right? And Google did this study three years ago and they were right. Um, they figured out that by 2020, 86% of all content consumed would be on video. It's right around 83% right now. And I think one of the mistakes that brands make is they think that means overly produced, camera crew, overly edited. No, no, no. We're talking iPhone out on Instagram stories, on Instagram on Facebook live people don't want perfection they want real and so when we talk about posing in front of Lambo I mean I remember posing in my ads in front of my Honda Accord and everybody clicked on them too right and I didn't see anybody posing in front of my car in the parking lot but I see that happen too but really what we want at the end of the day we want people to relate to us right the problem with that shallow marketing with the positioning of all of it is that on the surface, it seems like a win, but it's actually a loss because you get somebody's attention without depth. You get a one-time customer. You get somebody's attention with a relationship and authenticity. You get a lifetime customer. That's why these gurus are chasing their tails over and over and over and over again. And so the first thing to remember about producing content or producing a lot of content is to remember why. It's not that you need to have an original idea every day. It's not that you need to have 74 different pieces of content every day. Eric and I will tell you this from being in the Marine Corps. Leadership is not saying something once. It's saying something as many times as required till the last person gets it, i.e. that Lance Corporal at the very bottom that does, still doesn't want to show up on time even when you send him there three hours early, right? And that is what it is about content. A customer journey is somewhere between 25 and 150 touch points, which means you have to have the same congruent message over and over. You're just chopping up the wrapping paper. So your message might be move every day. So you might talk about mindset and habits and your reading routine and your breakfast and your smoothie. And at the end of all of it, you're like, oh, and just remove today. Just move today. Just like Nike is just do it. And so it's really important to do that. So the first thing is you have to earn the right to overproduce videos. You have to earn the right to make editing complicated. What people want is people want human connection. I've said this on a previous episode. They don't buy the best product. They buy the best relationship. So your energy, your authenticity on video is what's going to create that. And one default that you can never go wrong with when it comes to doing video and where to start is just turn on the video and say, hey, guys, I'm doing video. What content do you want me to say? What do you want me to produce? Hey guys, I'm on video today and I really just don't want to be because I don't know what to say. And you'll start feeding off the energy and building a deep, authentic relationship with your customers. These are the people that are going to buy from you. You're going to help them achieve their goals and they're going to talk about you forever. And so when it comes to video, it is going to be a requirement just like digital marketing is going to be a requirement. And Five years ago, we lived in a world where you didn't have to be on the internet, but your business is only valuable if people can find it where they are, not where you want them to be. And so right now, all the attention in the world is on social media and on video. 
And that is where everybody is. So if you want to play with that attention, you have to create that content to get it. And so, yes, authenticity, transparency, and just authentic connections. These people are giving you their credit cards. They're trusting you with their lives. And so when you show up as a human, they feel safe enough to do that. And that's why you see these gurus and the bullcrap out there. Those bullcrap gurus attach bullcrap students. That's why you don't see case studies. Nobody's praising their name from the mountaintop, right? They're like, give me my money back, charge back, charge back, bigger pockets, rip off report, right? Putting all that in there. And so, yeah, when it comes to video, don't overcomplicate it. Just turn on the phone, do a live, ask Q and A's, find a question in a comment. And instead of responding, turn on the video and respond. Yeah. You have plenty of opportunities to meet people where they are. And so that's how I see video. And then Eric, the one thing about the repurposing content, one piece of content, like a clip of this, if we took a two minute clip of this, that same clip can go on Instagram, on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. The only difference is the caption and the call to action because each platform is different. And so the reason I tell people not to syndicate at the same time is basically you're making your job harder. Because if the video goes up on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn on the same time, well, now if everybody's on social at that time, we'll see it, but everybody who comes on later won't. Post it on Instagram on Monday morning, post it on Facebook on Tuesday afternoon, and post it on LinkedIn on Thursday morning, and then you'll catch your audience where they are in their time with the caption that moves them forward, knowing that all of those roads lead back to your business. And social media is an extension of your business, right? Like this is why I teach it as a lighthouse. Your business is a lighthouse and every piece of content that you put out into the world, light, like a beacon or a waypoint back in. And so you chop it up and disseminate it, not because you have to be 8 million places at once or create 8 million pieces of content, but you have to meet people where they are, when they're there with the content call to action that's gonna move them closer to you and everybody has different consumption. So if your audience is on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on Instagram, you just take your content, put it out there where they are, and all roads lead back to you. Boom. Look how easy that was. That was amazing. That's like, it's, it's like I talk all day. It's like, you know, it's, not, it's like you know what you're talking about, and that's why you're here. Uh, it's amazing how that works. I mean, obviously, again, a, a quick knowledge this time, not the long 45s that we're used to, but I think people will take away. I mean, these are great points. And honestly, a lot of what I do when I have you on is repurpose this content to educate people because yeah, we could talk for her forever, but there's a lot of stuff that you put out and you could drink from a fire hose, but I like to chop these up and put this out because I just like your content. I think a lot of people think of, you know, they all want to take as much in, but you can only read so many books. You can only take in so much knowledge and work on a piece by piece. Don't try to figure out social media as a whole in one day or one week, figure it out, get good at it, move on, read books, find the people who are out there that, I mean, if you need a list of people, I'm sure between the two of us, we could give you a list. Uh, and obviously you provide a lot of this content for free on your site, these tips, these tricks that folks need to be learning about. So before you go, tell folks how they could find that information and then we'll, we'll get you out of here. Cause I know we, we've got, a, we're all, just everybody's in the busy world these days. I mean, we're all, we're all running for a COVID world where we're all busy. But I gotta go make more content, right? And probably more videos like look what Luke told me to do. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's everywhere and the mission is to give away all of this to help you. And yes, Eric, I actually break them down by you, like literally do this, do this, do this. And the one piece of advice and Eric nailed it and I have to echo it because it's missed in this space when it comes to advice, your is not to consume it all and implement it all. You consume you hear something that you want to fix, you take it, you go implement it, and then you come back and consume again. And say that you're making incremental changes, habitual changes like atomics or small 1% changes every day that are going to have a long lasting effect down the road without burning yourself out. This is a game, and the game can never be perfected, it can just be played. So keep practicing it out there and i will see you guys on my podcast at mindofgeorge.com i love it go check it out it's one of the best podcasts out there uh so go check out george follow him all over on the socials brother i want to thank you for coming on uh you guys have a yes, great great uh rest of your week and i'll see you in two weeks thanks brother be good talk to you soon bye bud
Thank you for watching this episode of To The Point. As always, I'm your host, Eric Mitchell, and we thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you know someone that we should be interviewing on our show, or you'd like to be a guest on our show, feel free to email us at hello at tothepointtv.com. We'd love to have you as a guest on our show. Please go ahead and feel free to follow us on Twitter at to the point TV. We'd love to see you on Twitter. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram. We're huge fans of Instagram here at To The Point. So give us a follow at To The Point and a like and a share so you can see the guests that are coming up on IG. And that is at to the point TV. It's not dot com. It's just at to the point TV. <laughs> so confusing with all these names taken. And uh, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know what we're going to get ready to go. But before you do that, if you're a fan of Facebook and you spend a lot of time on there, go give our Facebook page a like and a follow and share it with your friends. And keep in mind, if you can't get to your YouTube, you can always watch us live at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern weekdays. Uh, we appreciate to see you there. And as always, my favorite peeps, you're here on the YouTube and we love you here on YouTube. So make sure that you drop in and you can see every episode and never miss an episode right? Because if you smash that subscribe button, give it a like and flick that bell, you know, you flick that bell, you get notified before everyone else when we drop the latest episode or subscription. And as a reminder, all of our segments and shows go live weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. So you will be the first to catch them and you don't want to miss them. Go check out our library. They are broken down by hashtags. So you will never miss an episode. On behalf of our entire team here at To The Point, we want to thank you for tuning in because if it wasn't for viewers like you, we wouldn't have a show. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, I'm your host, Eric Mitchell. Be safe, be strong, be smart, and God bless America. Get to the point.